most unusual, unexpected thing happened here in Essex Street in the heart of Dublin in 1681. And it involved an elephant of all things. And this is the story. And it happens on Friday night, it's the 17th of June, and it's the year of our Lord, 1681. And there's this elephant on show in town. And Mr. Wilkins has brought the elephant in to Dublin. Now, I've no idea how you get an elephant to Dublin in 1681. But anyway, Mr. Wilkins has the elephant in Essex Street and it's on show. And he's charging the public a few pennies to come and see the elephant. And on the Friday night, the, the booth or the crate that the elephant is in gets burnt. Now, I'm thinking vandals or something like that. I mean, it's, it's a little bit unusual to think that the elephant would, would just accidentally go up in smoke. But anyway, so there's a fire and the elephant dies. And Mr. Wilkins thinks, well, he's lost, his, he's lost his, his main attraction. So what he'd like to do is he'd like to salvage the skeleton so that he can still have something to show the people. But somebody else has a different idea. Alan Mullen is 27 years old. He's a Dublin doctor. He studied medicine in Trinity and he's got the chance of a lifetime, he's going to dissect the elephant. A real, I mean, once in a lifetime opportunity. So he gets in touch with Mr. Uh, Mr. Wilkins and they erect a, a, a place, a shed, where he's going to be able to work. And a crowd is gathered, so there's a great noise um, because people want souvenirs of the elephant. If they couldn't afford to pay, they would now like to have a little bit of the elephant. And so there's a, there's a crowd of musketeers who have been brought in to hold the people back. And they're working by torchlight, so there's people holding torches. And it's such an enormous task. It's too big for one person. So he brings in the butchers of Dublin to give him a hand. So, I mean, it's just an amazing piece of street theatre, almost. And they work through the night for several hours. And it's a really scientific dissection because Alan Mullen, despite the, you know, the, the improvisation of it all, does this really scientific analysis. He weighs and measures everything. So we know the tusks are three and a half feet long. We know there's 75 feet of intestines, everything. He sticks his finger in bits of, bits of the elephant. Um, he draws the line at tasting things. He discovers a, a, a brilliant green substance in the intestines, but he doesn't taste that. So he, he does have some limits. And we know all this because Alan Mullen tells us. He writes a wonderful, wonderful personal account that's really detailed. You've got to read it. It's on Google Books, and you can go in and see the original in Marsh's Library and in the National Library, two of Dublin's great libraries. So you, you've got to read this. There's lovely pictures as well, too. And it's historic because among the many things that he notices, he notices that there's no cavity between the lungs and the chest wall. We all have a cavity between our lungs and our chest wall. Trust, trust me on that, you've got, you've got one of these pleural cavities. But Alan Mullen notices that the elephant doesn't have one and he records this. And it's the first record we have of this, the first person to notice this. And it's important because we now know that the elephant evolved from an aquatic animal. The ancestors of the elephants swam underwater. And so you can think actually that the, the trunk, the elephant's trunk, is an adaptation to snorkeling, all right? And that's the same, this absence of a chest wall. It's an adaptation in the body of the elephant to swimming at quite a depth. We now know that, but Alan Mullen is the first person to tell us. Mullen himself, we don't know too much about him. We know he studied um, medicine in Trinity, and uh, we know that he had to leave Dublin soon after that, maybe when he was about 30, possibly a love affair, there's some suggestion, a love affair that went wrong. He ends up in London very briefly. And then he goes to the Caribbean, which is opening up at that time. And they were looking for, med, uh, for medics to, to travel with the British Navy and things like that. He ends up in the Caribbean. And it sounds like he was killed in a barroom brawl in the Caribbean, I think at the age of about 33. So a sad end for Alan Mullen, but his elephant lives on.